Uh, last thing, I'm gonna share my testimony of what God did with my ankle, and then we're gonna jump into the river of this series that we're gonna start. But um, just real briefly, two weeks ago on Sunday, after church, the boys here invited me to go play volleyball. I played volleyball with them. Of course, I won every single game. No, that's actually not true. I had a player that wasn't that great on my team. But anyways, I jumped so high. Um, Jumped so high, there was a pothole, a hole in the grass, and so I blew my ankle out completely. I inverted it, and it completely uh, just collapsed, and I think I landed on my inside of my bone, uh, be, uh, underneath my ankle, and so it was pretty loud. Uh, the guys that were there heard the pop. Uh, Eddie was ne next to me. He heard the pop of my ankle pretty loud, so, uh, and then I was in, excruci in excruciating pain. I've broken my ankle before. I've sprained my ankle lots of times. I was in sports. I was in basketball. I was a runner, uh, and so I was like, I hope this is a sprain. These guys prayed for it. I start walking around on it. It feels okay. All of a sudden, it's swelling up. Anyways, long story short, I realize I think it's broken. I go to the ER. They x-ray it that night, Sunday night, two weeks ago, and they confirm it's broken. So two doctors looked at it that day at the ER. My, the emergency room doctor who was seeing me, he's like, I saw this, you know, the x-ray. You, you have a fracture. He's like, I just want to send it to my ortho specialist. Like, we're gonna try to track him down. Can you wait? I had to wait an extra two hours. The ortho saw the fracture. He's like, yeah, this is a pretty good fracture. Definitely we need to, uh, you know, have him see a podiatrist, a foot specialist, and they need to figure out if they're gonna do surgery or what they're gonna do. So two doctors saw the x-rays, confirmed it was broken. I got uh, referred to a foot specialist on Friday. So five days later, I finally get an appointment. I see my foot specialist. She reviews the x-rays. She zooms in on them, uh, shows me. She's like, you see this? That's, that's a big fracture right there. And then you see this, like, you know how your bone's supposed to be smooth on the outside? See all these little fragments? Yeah, we're gonna have to deal with those. Most likely, you're gonna need surgery. I'm gonna get a CT scan, a, a zoom close-up picture to find out exactly what's happening with these bone fragments. Are they attached or detached? And do we need to surgically remove them so that everything can heal up? So she zooms in, shows me this fracture, these bone fragments. My bone's not smooth. It's my, my, my tailless bone. And I'm just like, that's not good. I'm like, listen, lady, I'm a runner. She's like, what do you do? I'm like, I teach. What do you teach? I teach the Bible. You know, I'm a pastor. So I'm believing this is gonna be healed. And she's like, you know, I could see that she was not into that. And so um, she's like, yeah, you're not going to be running for a solid three months. You're not going to be, I mean, you're not going to be walking on it for three months. And you won't be able to run a race until at least six months until you rehab it. I'm like, I have a marathon and a triathlon coming up this year. In three months, I have my Portland marathon. I have to be running. She's like, forget about running. We we're going to have to do surgery. Let's get this CT scan. So anyways, a few days later on next Wednesday, so now it's 10 days after my fracture, I'm on crutches, I'm in a boot, I upgrade to like this I walk like cast, you got a bunch of you guys saw me in it. Um, so I'm walking around on that, my, my, my foot hurts every single day, it's swollen, 100 people are praying for it, every, I'm posting online, it's gonna be healed in three days, three days goes by, it's not healed, I'm like, oh, no! God, I'm going to, you know, uh, Philadelphia for you. I'm going to Arizona. I'm going to Central Asia. Like, I need to walk. I need to run. I'm running this marathon for you. I'm going to beat Joseph Antonov in three and a half hours. Marathon, eight-minute pace. This is for you, Lord. You need me to run the Portland Marathon with those 4,000 people and win. So Wednesday rolls around. And I'm like, okay, whatever the CT scan shows, that's it. Like, that's my plan for the next three to six months as far as the doctor's concerned of what they're gonna have me do. And my physical therapist is like, we need to you know, hear, hear back on the results. I'm seeing the physical therapist already three times while I was broken. Uh, so Wednesday rolls around, I get the CT scan. The next morning, I find a doctor that will like read the results to me because this doctor, the, the, the third doctor, the podiatrist is like, I don't have another appointment for another week. I'm like, no, I'm gonna see the results right away. And so I'm like, send me someone in your network. So I get, this, I get the fourth doctor, he's a podiatrist. He looks at my CT scan, he comes in, and he's like, he's got this puzzled look, and then I'm just like, okay, this is either really good news or really bad news. He's got this really puzzled look, he's just like asking me questions, I'm like, so can we see the results? He's like, just wait, I wanna ask you a few questions. So it says in your file that you're going on a missions trip to Central Asia, yeah. So you, it says you're a pastor, yeah. I've been believing for a healing, sir. He's like, so show me the scan, you know? He's like, just wait. And so he's just like kind of talking to me. He's like, so you were injured? Like, tell me about how it happened. And I told him about it. He's, and, I'm, and I knew, I was like, I've sprained it. I broke it before. This thing is broken. And, uh, and he's like, 
And then he's like feeling around on my foot. I'm like, just can you, can I see the results? But this guy is just puzzled because he saw the x-rays and then he saw the CT scan. And finally, he's like, okay, let's look at the CT scan. He shows me a blow up on my foot, 3D, zooms in, all this stuff. I'm like, so where's the fracture? And he's like, yeah, um, you see like the bone right here? It was like right there. That's where it was. I'm like, so what about like the bone fragments from the x-ray? Yeah, I don't, I just know that the CT scan says you're fine and you can walk today. Come on, 10 days later, no fracture, no bone fragments. Bones don't heal in 10 days, you guys. Just the bone alone takes six to eight weeks, plus like the repairing of the ligaments and the tendons and all the other damage I did when I snapped my ankle sideways completely. <laughs> Ouch, right? Uh, and so 10 days, God supernaturally heals, heals my ankle. Over the last three days, um, I've had just a tiny bit of soreness. My ligament is probably about 90%, but I'm, oh, I was, I've been jumping on it. I've been running. I don't know if I'm ready for like marathon pace running yet. So I'm just going to believe that this is going to be completely finalized and finished. But it's crazy to me that I couldn't like bear weight on it. I was hobbling around. I was always in pain. It was always swollen. I mean, people on the 4th of July saw it. it was blue on this side, blue on this side. My toes were blue. It was swollen. Now the swelling's gone. It's not blue at all. And it's totally normal. That's God. Won't God do it again? God is a healing God. He's a supernatural God. I mean, uh, there's a lot I actually learned from this, just contending for this, taking communion every day, having people pray for me. Um, but I think one of the greatest things I learned, and I just wanted to deposit this in t uh, for you guys that are contending and believing for a healing, is that I realized, and I had this as information like years ago, and there's three times where I've heard this like message and thought, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I'm gonna preach that. I'm gonna, I might even write a book on that. But then it never actually practiced it until uh, this ankle. But what I realized is that the seedbed of faith is actually imagination. Yeah, come on. That your imagination is the seedbed of faith. The faith begins when you actually, because you know your imagination is so powerful. You know what psychologists say? They say that if you like, you know, like have like a dream or a nightmare or like you imagine something really, really deep, that your subconscious cannot tell the difference between a real experience and an imagination experience that it, it wires you the same, that your imagination has that much power, it's as if it really happened. And I mean, they, and they've done a lot of psychological tests and studies, you know, people are like, you know, right now we're gonna burn you with a hot iron, but they put ice on them, and they actually, not only do they feel a burn, but they actually get a burn, and it's just an ice cube. But the power of what your imagination will do to your biology is crazy. So I realized that one of my friends, he's my chiropractor, he's been seeing me once a week working on my ankle. I had a physical therapist working on it four times. And I was just having everyone. I was like, I don't, like people are like, you should try this. I'm like, I'll try everything. You know what I mean? Uh, but I was, I was trusting the Lord. <laughs> and I was declaring it online. But uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Ah, had a good thought. Imagination. Um, the power of meditation. Oh, my doctor, my, my chiropractor, he's like, hey, Vic, like you've been believing for this thing to be healed. I believe it's gonna be healed, but I feel like you just need to like relax, rest, and just like let the Lord do it. Like you just on a run 24 seven. The moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, you're just going, 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 talking, 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 healing, healing, healing. pray, pray, pray. Da, da, da. He's like, can you just shut up and relax for a minute? And I was like, bro, you're right. And I just, God reminded me about what Chris O said about imagination and Andrew Womack and all these other guys. And I'm just like, yeah, power of imagination. So I just, I took like, I couldn't quite, you know, do a day, but I just took a few hours and I was like, just sat with the Lord. I was like, Lord, I'm not gonna contend for my ankle. I'm just gonna sit in this space and I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see your face. I'm gonna thank you. I'm gonna worship you. And when I see you, in you, there's no sickness or disease or brokenness. And I just began to see myself. I just began to imagine and see. I was like, I'm getting out of my bed. I'm like running. I'm jumping at church. Like I started to imagine scenarios. Like I'm running the Portland Marathon with my whole tribe and crew. I think there's like 12 or more of us signed up for it on, a, on our team from KM. And I just started to imagine this stuff. And I was like, God, I thank you this is finished. So I'm coming to this Wednesday appointment. I'm like, God, I thank you this is finished. I'm taking communion. They do the scan. I don't like feel anything. I don't feel like the supernatural thing, but it was just this progression. And it was just a seedbed of faith. And it, man, like God is good. So 
If you're here and you've been contending for a miracle and a breakthrough, we just want to release that in the room right now. If you, I, mean, I know we already prayed for some of y'all, but just raise your hand real quick again. Like, I need a miracle. I need a healing. I know, I know that there's those of you in this room, so just keep your hand raised right now, Father. I thank you. You're so good. God, that whatever is available for this blondie son that's so weird up here is available to any of your kids. I am definitely not your favorite. Although I'm like amazing, I'm not your favorite. They are, Lord. So if you could do it for this, man, do it again, Lord. So we just release your power. We release the power of testimony, which in Hebrew means do it again. And we thank you, Lord, for the power of the finished work. Thank you that your blood has spoken a better word. Your body has spoken a better word that your blood cries out from the ground still and says, you're forgiven, you're healed. So we just release restoration to the body of Christ in Jesus' name. And I specifically call Tanya Didick. And we call this cancer reversed. She doesn't get a miracle. It's not very long that she has. The medicine has already given up. Doctors have given up. But we have not given up because the blood speaks a better word. So, Tanya, we call you healed. Fully restored. Back to original design in Jesus' name.